I want to talk about the venture capital process. And much of what I'm going to talk about comes from an excellent article from the Harvard Business Review, November, December 1998, by Bob Zeider, entitled How Venture Capital Works. Now, venture capitalists provide funding to startup companies in return for a portion of the firm's equity. And if you've seen the TV show Shark Tank, that provides an entertaining look into the world of the VC. If you haven't seen the show, uh, it has five entrepreneurs, or five, I'm sorry, five wealthy investors. Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, is the probably the best known, who are asked by the entrepreneur to provide funding for their business in return for some percentage ownership in the business. So for example, an entrepreneur might be offering 10% of their business for $100,000, so essentially they're valuing the business at a million dollars. What are venture capitalists looking for? Well, there's a myth that the VCs look for good people with good ideas. Uh, basically, they're looking for good industries. And if you watch Shark Tank, you'll find times when they, they really like the person and they think they have a good idea, but they don't think it's a very good industry. It's not going to be big enough for them to make any money, so they choose not to invest in that person's business. What's the ideal entrepreneur? Well, the ideal entrepreneur is going to be in a, a qualified in a hot area of interest. They're going to be able to deliver sales or technical advances, such as FDA approval, with some reasonable probability. They should be able to tell a compelling story of why people should invest in their business. They should recognize the need for speed to an initial public offering for liquidity. Okay? The venture capitalist is not interested in being in this for the long haul. They hope to be in for a few years and then sell their stake through an initial public offering or selling out to another company and getting their money back. The entrepreneur should have a good reputation um, the entrepreneur should recognize the need for a team with a variety of skills. Sometimes you'll see, if you watch Shark Tank, uh, a team of two people representing a business. And it's good when they hear that one person handles the sales side, one person's the technical person. Okay? They're different skills and you need both of those to succeed. Um, the person or the people in the business should work diligently towards a goal, but they should be flexible. And again, if you watch Shark Tank, sometimes you'll see people with a good idea, but the, the uh, sharks will offer some suggestions. For example, instead of building a business, why don't you license the technology? And in some cases, licensing the technology is the only way to make money. Yet the entrepreneur is adamant about building a business. In those cases, you oftentimes find that the, um, the investors, the uh, sharks, will choose not to invest with that person because they don't, they're not flexible enough to understand that there are other ways to make money. They need to be able to get along with the investor group. And again, if you watch Shark Tank, you'll see cases where they see uh, an entrepreneur who has an excellent idea, it's a good product in a good industry, yet they realize they don't want to work with this person. So while that person may get an offer, you'll see some of the other sharks drop out because they know, I don't want to work with this person. The person should understand the cost of capital and, a, and the typical deal structures. That is, they should understand that, you know, most venture capitalists are not going to accept a really small percentage of the business. These are busy people. They um, they expect to own a significant portion of the business. Um, you'd like to have an entrepreneur that's sought after by many venture capital firms. Okay, that's a, that's a good sign. That's a signal that the rest of the market thinks you have a good idea. The entrepreneur should have realistic expectations about process and outcome. Okay, some people are not realistic. They expect to turn um, a small business into a multi-million dollar business in a matter of days or weeks, okay, or, or a couple of years, and that may not be realistic. Okay, in terms of investing, when do venture capitalists like to invest? 
Okay, we always think of venture capitalists as wanting to invest right at the beginning, but generally they don't want to invest at the beginning of an industry. They want to see where the industry is going, and they want to invest in here where there's still some growth opportunities. Okay, before the market starts to or the industry starts to turn down. Okay, or starts to slow. They want to be in here where the growth is rather rapid. Okay, in this case down here, this turns out to be a loser industry because they get in here and then things start to die out. In fact, they start to slow, the growth starts to slow quite dramatically even before they get out. Okay, this is okay. This is a good one because you can see, it gets a little bit hard to perhaps see the inflection points in the graph, but this one keeps going up. And it doesn't actually start to flatten out until probably about here. So that's a winner. Here it starts to, it goes up fast, and then starts to slow a little bit. Okay, VCs may still be interested, but this is a better, this is a better industry to be into. Okay, it hasn't flattened out much. Okay, it doesn't start flattening out until quite a bit later. How's the, in, the venture capital industry work? Well, you need an entrepreneur to start with an idea. And how do they fund it? Well, they usually start by funding it with their own financial resources. But in many cases, they will get government grants or grants from corporations. You'll find a lot of uh, university professors oftentimes have government grants to uh, do research in an area. And then sometimes they try and commercialize that idea. They'll oftentimes, when they need more money, they'll go to a venture capital firm. Where does a venture capital firm receive money? Well, they have private investors, okay? wealthy individuals, uh, universities, endowment funds. A lot of places will invest in a venture capital firm hoping to uh, generate a nice return. And the money goes to the venture capitalists, and they're the ones that sort through the ideas. And when they find a good idea from an entrepreneur, they fund them and they provide money to that entrepreneur. Now, the venture capitalist doesn't want to be here forever. They want to get out. And how do they get out? Well, they'd like to have an initial public offering. That is, they'd like the company to go from being a private company to a public company and have it sell stock to the public. And they do that by going to an investment banking firm like a Goldman Sachs, who helps them sell the stock to the public. Okay. The public pays the money, money flows to the investment banking firm. Okay, venture capitalists recoup their investment and hopefully a nice profit. And um, then they're out. Okay. Now it's a public company, you know, like an IBM or Microsoft, you can actually buy it on the stock exchange. You can go to call your broker up or go to your E-Trade account and buy shares of that stock. Okay. Calculating the probability of success. Even if all of the individual events have pretty good probabilities, the probability of success is actually rather low. And in the, in the paper, How Venture Capital Works, he lists eight different factors here. Company has sufficient capital, management is capable and focused, product development goes as planned, production and component sourcing go as planned, Competitors behave as expected. Customers want the product. Pricing is forecast correctly, and patents are issued and enforceable. And he assigns an 80% probability to each one of these factors. But when you multiply them all together, it turns out that the combined probability of success is less than 17%. It's 16.78%. So even though all of these have a pretty good chance of succeeding, okay, the chances that all of them will come in are very, very small, okay? Less than 17%. How about a breakout of performance? Well, here's a table, again, from, from this article, where they look at the breakout of a $1,000 investment for a venture capital firm. Of the $1,000, they expect about $200 to be invested in bad projects. They don't know which ones, obviously they wouldn't invest in them. Uh, about $400, about 40% of the projects will just be alive, okay? They're not gonna make any money, they're not gonna lose any money, okay? They're just gonna break even. 
then they have $200 or 20% turn out to be okay. 10% um, or $100 worth of their $1,000 investment turn out to be good, and 10% or $100 worth of their 1000 turn out to be great. So what's the payout? The bad one has no payout after five years. The good one just returns what was invested, so it gets one times the investment. An okay project returns five times the investment. A good one returns 10 times the investment, and a great one returns 10, 20 times the investment. So, so um, what's their net return? Well, the net return for the bad one is they lose the $200 invested. The one that's just alive nets them nothing because they get back exactly, their gross return is exactly what they invested. The OK project returns five times the investment or returns $1,000 minus the 200 invested, so they get 800. The good one returns 10 times or the $100 invested, so they get 1,000 minus the 100 invested, they get 900. And the great one returns 20 times the investment or $2,000 minus the 100 invested or 1,900. So they expect on their $1,000 investment to get back about $3,400. How do VCs spend their time? Well, it's, it's um, a misconception that VCs spend all of their time looking for business and simply funding those businesses. Okay? There's a lot more to it. And if you look at this uh, graph here, you can see that much of their time, a quarter of their time, is spent serving as directors and monitors. Much of the, or a really important part of the venture capital business is providing expertise to the business. Again, if you watch Shark Tank, oftentimes people are interested in going to Shark Tank not just to, to raise money, okay? In some cases, they don't really need the money. They're looking for strategic partners. They're looking for people with expertise in their area. So if they're in the clothing business, they're looking for the, entre the, uh, the shark that's an expert in selling apparel and getting some advice on how to do that. Okay. A big percentage of their time is in recruiting management. A good venture capital firm, okay, a credible venture capital firm, makes it a lot easier to hire a good management team. Okay. So 10% you know, goes to soliciting business, 5% uh, to selecting opportunities, 5% to analyzing business plans, 5% for negotiating investments, okay? But as we said before, a quarter of their time serving as directors, 15% uh, of their time acting as consultants, okay? 20% um, recruiting management, 10% assisting in outside relationships, okay? Making, helping the business make connections, and 5% exiting the business, the initial public offering, or selling out to um, some other corporation. So as we can see, the VCs provide more than money, but they also provide the expertise and advice. And as, as we said, a credible VC firm can help to attract a strong management team, and a strong management team can, you know, help the company gain credibility. When eBay was able to hire Meg Whitman, she was a credible CEO. She had a strong background in management and was well respected. So all of a sudden, people considered this to be a real business. And the reason she came along is because they had a strong VC firm um, and that gave them credibility. So as I said before, on, on, shows, on a show like Shark Tank, where you get to see a little bit of the, this working, these workings, you'll see that sometimes the entrepreneurs don't need the money, but they're looking for a strategic partner. And sometimes they'll choose the partner who makes a less, um, a less good offer just because they think that's a better partner for them. So they might, if they have a product that they, they think will sell well on TV, they like to go to the person who's, who has expertise selling on QVC, even though that person may offer, may ask for a higher percentage 
for the same amount of money. So essentially it's value, valuing the business um, to be less. But VCs provide a, a big part in helping businesses grow and um, this is a this is a really important part in the financial markets.